The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. He went out again about nine o'clock and he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and again about three o'clock. He did the same. And then about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. Now when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these, these last worked only an hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This particular uh, parable always reminds me of one I used to travel out to uh, Walnut Creek, California to visit my mother and my younger sister. Walnut Creek is not too far from Napa Valley. And the Napa Valley, as you know, is teeming with grapevines. And if you travel around, particularly uh, in Walnut Creek, go down the streets, what do you find there? You'll find individuals standing on corners, corners of the streets, waiting to be hired by someone. That's right. They'll stand there all day long, waiting for that. One of their shock values, because a lot of the parables have a shock value. And this one certainly does, because here's this individual landowner who pays all these individuals the same amount of money. And of course, the individuals who labored all day long expected more, naturally, but it just points out the generosity of this landowner. And that, I think, is what Isaiah was trying to get across to those in exile. He's trying to tell them, because they were really on a down moment in their lives. Here they are in exile, and they want to go back to Jerusalem. They want to somehow identify with the temple, because the temple for them meant everything in their life. So he had to somehow give them 
the courage and the strength to be able to say, yes, someday this merciful and generous God is going to allow you to come back. Marvelous. And Isaiah makes it very clear to them that God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Reminds us, doesn't it, uh, some time ago, uh, a couple Sundays ago, where Peter, when Jesus says to, uh, to the disciples, I'm going down to Jerusalem to suffer, to die, to rise, and Peter says, no, that's never going to happen to you, because after all, you're the Messiah. And Jesus says to him, you are thinking like people think, not like God thinks. And that's part of our problem, isn't it? Really. And uh, this is what St. Paul is also trying to get across to individuals too, that we have to focus on the mercy and the forgiveness of God, and once you focus on that mercy and forgiveness of God, then you're going to be willing to reach out to others. And that's why St. Paul could commend the Corinthians because they reached out to other churches to help them. And with the Philippians, he said, no, why are you refusing to do that, to reach out to others, to help others? And if you really look at generosity, one of the aspects, I believe, of generosity is compassion. And that's why when you look at the life of Jesus, as we try to do in the Gospels, what you notice with regard to Jesus is he was very compassionate, very merciful, he reached out to so many individuals, the many miracles of mercy that he performed, 39 or more. And the compassion that he had for those people out in the desert when he fed the 5,000 in the desert with a, what, a few fish and a few loaves of bread, and how he commended the widow for her generosity, giving her last two pennies, marks, and the ability to be able to grasp what Jesus was trying to get across to us as well as that spirit of generosity, that spirit of compassion, that spirit of reaching out then to others to be able to do that. And that's why I marvel at individuals, I do. When individuals are willing to do that and they, they do it anonymously, that I think is marvelous. Not when you have your name, you know, inscribed somewhere on a building or whatever it happens to be, or you get your name in the newspaper saying, I gave so many millions of dollars to this particular college or whatever it is. But to do it anonymously, able to do that. And one of the aspects I think that's really important with regard to generosity is that you focus on the individual or individuals rather than on yourself. It's very important to do that because so often what we do in that process is we focus on what I'm giving up. And that's why St. Paul could say, God loves a joyful, happy person that gives. A joyful person. A joyful person that gives generously in that way. He loves a generous giver. It's like the, uh, the father who gave his son a uh, 50 cent piece and a dollar. And he told him, now you put that dollar in the, com in co in the co collection basket. Put that in the collection basket. So when he got home, he found out, no, he didn't put that dollar in the collection basket. And he asked him why. And he said, well, I found it much better to give the 50 cents because God loves a generous giver to give that rather than to give the, uh, the one dollar bill. And I think that's part of our problem, isn't it? 
Our community, uh, on uh, Thursday night, we went over to the cathedral for this Mass on Peace, and they passed the basket around. And I noticed, particularly in that basket, there were a lot of $5 bills. And I said to myself, okay. In many churches, what happens is you find a lot of $1 bills. But the individuals will say, well, that's because I feel that God wants to, to give this as be, to, because I want to be generous and give this in, rather than to give the five dollars. The ability to be able to see how all these individuals at the present time need our help and our reaching out to them. That's why so often now, as we see all that's going on with all these things, you know, uh, the storms and the floods and the hurricanes and earthquake now in Mexico, we say to ourselves, wow, how am I going to be able to reach out to all these individuals? And you say, I can't do that. I hear that often from people who will say, I get so many requests, so many requests from various uh, uh, societies and so on to be generous to them. I can't do all of that. And I said, I know you can, but that's why you have to be selective. But do something. And that's why I think we have to listen to what Mother Teresa says. You concentrate on one person. She says, that's what you do. You concentrate on one person and be able to be even generous to that individual, to reach out to that individual and to help that person. I don't know how many of you are aware of the, the third baseman for the Milwaukee Brewers, but here's a, a man who spends his free time with his daughter in the, where she is right now, she's in the hospital, the children's hospital in, in Milwaukee, all his free time because she has a serious uh, type of illness. Marvelous way of showing his generosity to this child, giving all his attention to her. That's what we have to be able to do. That's what we have to be able to reach out to others and to somehow say, yes, how blessed we are, aren't we? We are blessed because of what other people are suffering, what they're going through. And so often I think we do, what we do is we sit back and say, oh my, isn't that terrible? Rather than say, well, maybe God is asking me to reach out and to do what I can. That, I think, is what's crucial. Be able to do what you can, not what you can't. Because so often we put the emphasis on what we can't do rather than what we can do. So here's your opportunity then, wherever there is an opportunity to do it, to show your generosity to others and to reach out to them and to thereby say to yourself, yes, that's how I follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Can we do that? Yes.